G'day, I'm Judd, the Aussie Nerf Cowboy, and uh, this is Stories with Judd by the campfire, because why not? Um, so I'm going to tell you about the first time I got into Nerf, um, which would be via a mass event in Australia we have called Z-Town. So Z-Town is a HVZ style event, which is a huge interactive story. Uh, starting with three factions that verse each other, the Red Earth Raiders, the Yellow and Blue. I never really paid attention to what they were called because I was never on their team. Um, and then the zombies. And to start the game, there's very, very few zombies. Uh, it's really about the PvP element of the start of the game. where And it's a stock-only event from when I've started playing. So... To, for the, my first event, I just saw it advertised on uh, Facebook. And myself, my friend Kelly, Isaac Crawley, James, um, we saw it, thought it'd be fun, got some blasters together and went. We showed up, there was a big introduction, a few hundred people there, a lot of people in costume, a lot of people out of costume. Majority of the players would have been very new to Nerf as well, um, like myself. I ran a pair of hammer shots just in the pockets of my pants. A Lawbringer had just came out around that time. This was in 2015. Um, and I had a fire strike in a little shoulder bag, like a little tiny shoulder lad bag that I just had on the side. And I had a, a tape, I taped a torch onto the bottom underneath the laser. Um, yeah, I don't remember entirely what everyone else was running. But, um, yeah, we, we dressed up and I, I'd sort of done cowboy theme then. I was wearing a bowler hat, a vest. And, um, yeah, so we started the day with a briefing. All of the um, moderators were wearing suits, looking very um, Secret Service-like. We got introduced to the, uh, the mayor... Uh, the person in charge of everything, um, in charge of the uh, CDPC or something like that. I'll have some photos later on in the video that I'll insert towards the end, just for a highlight reel of just the one, the, some of the photos I was in, highlighting some NPCs and some of the story characters that I'll um, share. <clears throat> um, at the start of the mission, we were all told to I introduced to our faction leaders, told where our bases were, the uh, leader of all of the factions, because they're all under the same employer. And then there's security faction, which is red, logistics faction, which is blue, and medical faction, which is yellow. And we're all working for the same company. But as soon as you get told where your faction bases are, this was at Sydney Olympic Park, and we were in the uh, back corner <clears throat> and we were in the back corner, we got there as soon as we got there, Red Leader went into this big tirade of no, everything is not okay you just saw zombies attack the, uh, the person in charge here we are the strongest faction we are the security faction we will be supreme screw medical, screw logistics I'm summarizing this. This is all over five years ago. Um, so the details aren't entirely clear. I'll just be recalling this to the best of my ability. And we're basically told what we need to get, which is canisters of fuel, um, to power our shield generator, which keeps the zombies out. Um, we're told there's people we can do missions for. There's a store. There's some weird carnival, um, like carnival-like games you can attend, there's a shop, there's their own in-game currency. And we were just sort of like told to go and spread red propaganda, basically. Like, we're here, we need to get 
as much resources as possible. We need to get all the NPCs on side. We need to do everything possible to further Red's agenda. First time playing uh, a nerf event, first time playing HVZ, first time doing a lot of this stuff, I just went like, okay, let's go have a look. We found a couple of NPCs called the Bertie Bot Twins or something. I'm not sure if they were supposed to be related or a couple or anything like that, I don't remember. But they were wearing very colorful and eccentric uh, clothing, like a floral suit and something else I can't remember, but there'll be photos at the end of the video. <clears throat> and they were an escort quest. So we would go and find them and they said, oh, we need to go over here, we need to go there, and you just take them from A to B. And upon completion or just a friendly conversation, they were just generously doling out 30 bucks, which was like a paper printed money with them on it. And they were telling everyone how it's the most valuable currency in the wasteland. It's the most valuable. It is going to get you very far. A lot of people covet this. I actually still have a birdie buck somewhere in this apartment from uh, five years ago. I generally try to take... I, I had a, a mass of them and I took them to future events and they actually seem to appreciate and value from returning NPCs and returning actors. You'd show them this old currency from the first event that they were a part of and without it being a part of the currency system, they valued it because it was a memory. I only have one or two left now, so I'm not going to be taking them to any future games if they happen. Pardon me. So, we did a few fetch quests, and we got some fuel, we got shot, we shot a lot of people. Um, the way that mechanic works for Z-Town is you get shot, you don't die, you're just injured. So you can't use your blasters because you're too busy holding the wound. But then you get back to your base, you heal, and you hit a button. Uh, you heal after a minute or so, and you're back in the game healed, and you can go around shooting again. So, But if you get tagged by a zombie, you just instantly become a zombie. The zombie mechanic is you get shot, you go back to the zombie base, hit a button, after the countdown goes off, you're back in the game. And, um, yeah, I did a lot of fetch quests and escort missions and just walked around doing a lot of things. Saw a lot of really cool things with me and my team. Uh, we called ourselves Firefly Squad because Firefly is an amazing TV show. And, yeah, we all appreciated that. I was like, screw it, let's just call ourselves that. And um, Firefly actually grew in power quite a bit. Um up until I started going more solo in uh, these events. Um, but even then, the members would still join up without me, which I thought was really good. And some of the ga uh, gameplay highlights that I remember seeing, as well as being a part of prior to when my story kicks into gear, was seeing a, a girl in a wheelchair being pushed by her friend. Um... At Sydney Olympic Park, there is this gigantic ramp that goes up like three levels. And they were going up and around about the middle area. And then there was a heap of zombies at the top. So they were like, oh shit, we can't go up there. So they uh, turn around to go back down. But by the time they'd gotten up to the middle area, a mass of zombies appeared at the bottom. And I'm across the field. I can't tell what they're talking about. I can only speculate... But it seemed to be that one of them came up with the idea of like, well, this is where we die. Let's split up and fight. So the girl that was pushing her friend pushed her down the ramp. And she had a rapid strike. And she just, one hand on the wheel, one hand on the rapid strike, went down the ramp and just unloaded an 18-round mag and then stopped. And then the zombies just got her but they're all cheering because it was just an amazing feat of just athleticism. It was just so cool. And no one got hurt, so it was wonderful. And the other friend ran straight at the horde of like 20 or so zombies, which was just a retaliator or something like that, um, and just ran at them shooting. She didn't even get through her mag, I imagine. She just ran at them with no self-preservation, and it was just a beautiful thing to see. Like, 
early game, like they got stuck. There was nowhere to go. And they're like, stuff it, let's do this. And it was just great to see. I actually cheered for them. And then all the zombies looked at me because I yelled pretty loudly. And I was like, um, yeah, let's, let's run. Because we're quite a ways away and I didn't want to draw that much attention that early in the game. So we fled, got away. I, um, we found the witch, which was one of our missions. The witch is patient zero at Zed Town. And in future videos, you'll hear me say a lot of things about the witch. I've had a lot of interactions with the witch. The witch is amazing. She's, uh, originally she cosplayed as the witch from Left 4 Dead. And she just became a staple of Zed Town. She's, I believe trained opera singer so when she screams it's proper echoing it, it's harrowing it became the rally call for the zombies and instant dread for any survivors you could be fighting another faction you'd hear the witch scream and you're like put a pin in it we gotta go the witch is invincible she can run she can kill none of the rules apply there are rumors and sometimes little rules and tidbits that um, happen. When we found the witch, she was in a cage in the back of a ute, a uh, small truck. And she was there with a medical doctor and a countdown timer. And he was saying like, oh, this and that and everything. I was just trying to quiz as much information out of him. I was like, is there anything that calms her down? Because people were shooting at her through the cage and stuff like that, and that was uh, enraging her. She'd scream and thrash, and hit the bars and stuff like that. And I'm standing next to her, I'm like, I don't, I don't wanna, can, can we please stop shooting her? And I figured, is there a way to calm her down? And he's like, she likes sugar. And I was like, okay, that's good to know. I took it for the truth. Turned out just to be something he made up on the spot. But then I went around and told everyone from other factions that she liked salt thinking I was being clever. So I was given misinformation and then I was spreading further misinformation. It got to the stage where I've heard since that um, she was just confused because people were trying to hand her like pretzels and stuff like that. And she's like walking up to them, looks at them and then it's killed you. And they're like, oh, I thought that was gonna protect me. And she's like, why would pretzels protect you? But people were like handing her gummy bears and lollies and stuff like that. Some people were just throwing them at her and she just killed them because you don't want to aggravate her. And it's just not, don't throw lollies at people. That's not a good thing. Um, but yeah, she was straight up harrowing, terrifying. It's movie grade SFX makeup, which was amazing. The makeup team for Zed Town is second to none. It's incredible. So we saw her, we got the information, we started spreading misinformation with the misinformation we were given. Eventually she got let out. I was nowhere near where that happened, but there are photos of it actually happening that I'll put in the end. Kept roaming around, tried to make a deal with Yellow Team, that didn't go down very well. At this stage, Red Team was the smallest team. Uh, the least amount of members and that changed over the years Zed Town operated. Red Team is now the fighting force and the team to be a member of. And I'm proud to say I've been a member of Red Team since day dot. I've had my falling outs with them at certain events, but um, predominantly I've just stuck with Red Team. And after a few just fetch quests and nothing special happening, just running around, shooting, talking, running, we heard music and I was like, I wonder what that is. That humans, technology, I'm going there. That must be a thing that we need to do, steal, procure, protect. But then I saw a person in a blue tracksuit um, with a giant speaker on his back. And I was like, this guy must know something. And I was running towards him until he turned around with zombie makeup and the green headband. And I was like, oh shit, not good. And he is what has been affectionately called the uh, the doof zombie. And he's just a zombie that you can interact with if you do it correctly. 
Um, but he's a fun zombie around. He's not there to kill anyone. He's a mobile spawn point, and he's invincible as well. And he's just got this huge speaker on his back playing music. When he first came out, heaps of people were there, and he just started playing Can't Touch This. So everyone's shooting him, laying on thick with the foam, and he's just dancing. <laughs> he's like, Can't Touch This, do, 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 do. And everyone's like, he's not getting stunned. We should run. And he just kept playing music and dancing. The witch came around and saw him. And they actually had a little dance together, which I thought was pretty fun. I think I got some photos of that as well from the uh, event. None of these photos are actually mine. The uh, photos taken by the event. And um, so Zed Town's official photographer. Some of them are watermarked. The ones that aren't watermarked, I don't know who took them. I apologize. But um, the witch and the doof zombie had a little dance together, which I thought was really fun. By this stage, there was a, a real big dip in players and an increase in zombies. So the factions kind of stopped fighting each other for the most part to try and accomplish some objectives to get out. Um, we teamed up with one of the um, NPCs, the guy who was giving us the initial briefing, who was a little bit of a dick, but he was the guy that got shit done. And um, we are following him, myself, Isaac, Kelly, uh, Crawley. And then after a while, he was telling us things to do and where to go. And we're in this big group of people following him. And I was like, I don't think this is a good idea anymore. I think he's trying to get us all killed. Or his plans are going to get us killed. And I leaned over to Crawley and I was like, we should leave. And he's like, yeah. And we left. But we didn't think to tell um, Isaac or Kelly, who were literally just in front of us. So we took off. We snuck away from the rest of the group. Um, they kept going. Isaac and Kelly died quickly after because they couldn't find us. And they just stuck with the mission, thinking we would catch up. Um... Yeah, they didn't like that too much, and that was, yeah, that was stupid on my behalf. We just sort of just left them behind. We just didn't think to tell them. Crawley and I snuck off. Uh, we found a little outpost cropping hideaway spot uh, with a couple of blues and a couple of yellows, and we just sort of sat there to have a break, had a drink of water, calmed down for a second because it was getting real immersive. Like, you were feeling the anxiety and the fear of zombies and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it started getting dark this time. And it was just like, no, if you've got a blaster, you're on my team. And we stumbled into another mass objective where people had collected these magnetic um, push button lights. And we had to put them around the stadium and turn them on. And then that would signal the helicopter. And they had the PA of Olympic Park Stadium play a helicopter sound. The team I was with, uh, we had one of the lights that didn't have batteries. So among the whole group of people with stock blasters, a few people had extra batteries, a few people had a blaster, and they're like, you know what, bugger it, I've got a secondary, and they took the batteries out of their blaster to power the light. And then given to me, because I was tall, I slapped it up really high. We looked around, and there was the entire stadium, every other metal pillar had the lights on it. We had accomplished the objective and the helicopter came, started coming down from sound. There was no actual helicopter. So we're cheering, we're in a stadium, but then we hear a crash and we're like, oh shit. And they basically led all the zombies to us while we're stuck inside of a uh, giant circle. So it was a giant booby trap. We all fell for it and we started running trying to put up a fight, but there's only so much you can do against so many zombies. And, um, yeah, I ended up running around until I found a little, uh, dead end, which I didn't realize was a dead end, down a set of stairs, because we were being chased into another group of zombies. So I ran down the stairs, there was a big firefight, and I hid behind a pillar with, um, two guys from blue, two guys from yellow. And the big firefight happened. There was people getting tagged and whatnot. And they're starting to panic. I'm like, shit, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And I was like, uh, mm, we can't fight our way out of here. I was like, guys, I've got an idea. 
and I put my hammer shots back in my pockets, and we started, and we just walked out. And I was like, let's just go. They think we're probably dead. If they ask us, we have to tell them we're alive. But let's just see if we could walk out. And we did, for the most part. We got out of the stadium, and there was a good portion of the last... Most of the survivors left in the game were in the stadium, and a lot of them went down. And it was just the five of us, two blue, two yellow, and myself from red. And they're like, yellow base is dead. Blue base is dead. I'm like, red base is in the back corner. We're alive. I'm going to red base. Come with me. I'll let you guys in. I'll talk you in. You help me get there, and you'll be honorary members of red. We're all alive. We need to fight the undead. And they're like, let's do it. And we just walked out. Got to a near an exit for the stadium. Started going down the exit. And one of the zombies are like, oh, the zombie spawns that way. And we're like, oh, okay, thanks. And we walk that way. And he's like, you're going the wrong way. And we're like, no, we're not. And he's like, they're alive! And ran at us and yelled. And we turned, Drew shot him. But now attention had been brought to us. And we're like, all right, cool. We went into a flying V, which was amazing. It was just, I feel like this looks cooler in my head <laughs> than the way it probably did being five years ago. But uh, I was at the head of the V with the two hammer shots out. I gave up using the Lawbringer at this stage and just used it for ammo storage for my hammer shots. Um, had the hammer shots out, walking forward, pointing in two different directions, just keeping my eyes on the sides and whatever they were using, uh, the two blue on one side, the two yellow on the other side, just flanking me hard. And we just come across small groups of like one, two, four, two, one survivors. And they'd see me as red and they'd be like, and then the two blues and the two yellows and they're like, what's happening? It's like, we don't want a red base, follow or die. It was just, it was go time. And I just kicked into gear. I was like, no, this is what I'm doing. Follow me if you want to live. And I just wasn't stopping for people. It's like, follow or die. And we just started going. And then we amassed, amassed a pretty decent group. We got most of the stragglers following me um, towards the back of the group. And as we were moving, kept the flying V at the front. We walked all the way to the side of the map because we didn't want... Um, to be in the open so we had our like our right side against the wall that was the uh, edge of the map walking the long way around the outside to get to red base because there was a lot of shipping containers and buildings that we could walk behind and cover so we'd have a lot of people facing one two at most three directions so we could stop a horde and Kelly had told me after the fact she found a massive group of survivors as a zombie and she was tracking them and she led a giant horde of zombies against the horde of survivors that I was leading which I thought was hilarious because she's like I, Judd's got to be in there somewhere I'm going to kill him for leaving me behind and I was at the front everyone's got to get out of here we got to live follow me or we're going to get left behind and we went behind the shipping containers behind the buildings all the way to this uh, like one person doorway entrance, like gap behind a uh, building and a shipping container that was right behind Red Base. And we were there and I went through and this is right at the end of the game and Red Leader is up on a table giving this last stand speech. Like this, we are the last faction. We are the last survivors we are going to make them pay for every every meter they take. We're going to make them pay for, with their undead blood. And I walk through um, the gap at the back of the building, like a little secret entrance, and um, I interrupt him. I don't remember his name, unfortunately, his character name. But um, I, I yelled out his name, and he hated being interrupted. And even at this point, when everything is dire... I interrupt him and he turns around and he's like, what? And I'm like, I bring you an army. And the 50 or so people that I had been leading 
from the other end, from corner to corner of the map. All yellow and blue and red, just every person I could find. There was maybe like six people at red base or so. And I just go, I bring you an army, raise my arms, and these people start coming up behind me. And he just goes, out, bloody standing, new plan, jumps back up on the table. He's like, no, we're getting out of here now. That's the evac right there. We can see it. It's right across this field and between those two buildings. We can see that light. That's where we need to get to. We can do this. And we all group up in this massive circle. Everyone's got their blasters facing outwards. And we're moving slowly and meticulously. And we are well and truly outnumbered by the zombies. But this is the last part of the day. And when, you're a, when you start the game, you get a, a dog tag. And the dog tag had a QR code or a barcode. And there was an app. And then when you get tagged, you give it to the zombie... Zombie scans it, and it keeps track of their kills. There's achievements and everything. And um, so all the zombies want to get a tag. And because of that last horde thing that happened at the stadium, there's a lot of new zombies. A lot of new zombies who haven't had a chance to kill anyone yet. And we're the last people. So no zombie wants to be the first to make a move because they'll get tagged. And then there's a respawn. They have to get to a, a spawn point hit a button, wait, and come back. And they're like, if I get shot here, I'm not getting a tag. There's only like 50 people and hundreds of zombies. And they're like, we need to play smart if they wanted to get a tag. They weren't working as a horde. They were working as a group of individuals trying to get individual kills. And that was well and good. It worked for us as the survivors. And we started moving as this great big circle, not really doing much as a standstill. We're like, threatening zombies as we move towards them and they're backing up because they want to get the last tag they can get. This is their last chance. They want that kill. And it was working very well for like the first 200 meters. And we still had like another 800 to go or something like that. It was a long way away that we were trying to make meticulous movements towards. And one zombie just went, ugh and feigned at us. And the person right in front of them just went, nah, turned, broke the circle, and went to run. And it just, chain reaction. Everyone's like, oh, we're running now. And broke the defensive circle, turned, and just decided to run. I tried to make up the gap. Couldn't do it. I only had 10 shots. And everyone was wiped. Just because one zombie went like that. And... I mean, we weren't going to make it the whole way, but the fact that we made it the 200 meters without firing a dart was impressive. Uh, turns out there was about... The, the original group of people that were at Red Base for the last stand before I had showed up with everyone else and we had a fighting chance to make it to EVAC, they stayed. Um, they knew they had to get to the EVAC to win, but they uh, decided... Well, while they make a slow and deliberate move to get there. We're going to stay here and wait for all the zombies to, you know, stop watching us and then go back through the exit we came through. And they went the long way, the way I fought and gathered all the people to get to. They sprinted because no zombies were there. And they went the long way and made it to the evac. They only were any in any real trouble the last hundred meters from evac because that's where all the zombies were we were all congratulating each other and waiting for stragglers and then next you know these this small number of people just come sprinting out of an alleyway and make it to evac and everyone's like what the hell how did that happen <coughs> and it was just amazing like to see i was like i feel a bit gypped <laughs> because i got there and i brought all these people but you know i still i had a great time it was my introduction to uh to nerf as a whole um i didn't get into the wars and the modding until after the next z town i attended which will be another story for another time but the just a few other highlights from the day every time you got tagged or every time you would be a zombie become a zombie everyone had the chance to go back to zombie spawn and they had the sfx 
makeup artists there. So you'd have a chance to get the proper horror makeup. You would get unlocks as zombies as well. If you killed five people, ten people, I don't know what the number was, you would get a pool noodle, like a, a cut down pool noodle that looked like a bit like a tentacle and it was a mutation to give you extra reach and stuff like that. Um, I, at one point, prior to joining the mass horde um, to make that last ditch to get the helicopter down, I teamed up with a guy for a short time who was on blue team and the best way I could describe him is a Viking. And he was just going around looking for a good death. That's all he wanted. Which, he just wanted to get to Valhalla. He wanted people to witness him. This is around the time uh, Mad Max was out. And he had, I didn't know this, but he had a cake frosting uh, that was silver or chrome. And he was one of the survivors who made it. And... In the photo of him at the end surviving, his entire beard and mouth is just silver. <laughs> because he, he must have done the whole witness me, he sprayed the chrome in his mouth at, the, at some point when he thought he was going to die and didn't. I teamed up with him until there was a group of like 12 zombies, uh, 12, 20, a large number. And there was just two of us. And I'm like, ah, oh, no, nah, not going that way. And he's like, all right, I'm going that way. And he had a strong arm. He had six shots and he fought off 12, 20, whatever. He fought through them, made it, and then continued to win the game, which I thought was amazing. I cowered it out and went and joined the mass group of people, safety and numbers, which wasn't the fact in this game. Um, I can't remember any other stories from that Zed Town specifically, but this was my introduction, and this is when Zed Town was like an eight hour event, non-stop, which was amazing. It started around noonish, just after noon, and it went till it was dark. There was a radio station, there was reporters, there's all sorts of things. The uh, Birdie Bucks currency ended up being worthless, which was just a fun little red herring in the game. You do all these missions and help these people out for nothing but an in-game prop which I still have some. Um, there was actual metal coins, which were really cool. Um, and the coins, I still have some. They had to change the material of them, so they had silver ones, chrome ones. Uh, at this stage, I think they were just... metal discs with a hole in the middle at this event. Uh, and I think I still have one of those. At the event afterwards, they had an actual coin, um, a bit smaller than a 20 cent piece, with the Z-Town logo hand printed on it in um, like a copper or a brass or something like that. And then um, a few events later, when people started like having surplus of these coins from previous events, they ended up changing it to silver, and they made the, uh, the bronze or copper ones practically worthless. But people still had these masses of coins because you do quests and people would have their friends go and then they wouldn't go another time so they'd give their coins over and it was just basically flooding the market. So they have to effectively combat that. Which I think they did pretty well. Um, but yeah, that was my introduction to Nerf. And um, I, the hammer shots served me incredibly well and... I just continued to use them because I liked being able to have two one-hand primable blasters with five shots as a stock-only event. And I was like, this is great. This is just going to work for me. So I kept doing that. And I still use the hammer shots. When I went to End War last year in 2019, I ran a pair of hammer shots for most of the day. It's been my loadout since my introduction to Nerf. And it's just worked non-stop since then so that was a lot of fun um next i'll have a heap of photos after i finish talking of the event with no commentary because i haven't figured out how to do that in editing yet <coughs> but um next story i could talk about how 
I became the Nerf Cowboy, or I could do the next Z Town that I attended. Um, I'll leave that up to you guys to vote for in the comments, I guess. And whichever one gets mentioned the most, I will do the creation of the Cowboy or the next Z Town. I've only got so many of these stories as I've only been to so many Z Towns. But um, I'll just keep it down to two options at a time. And whatever doesn't get picked will be put into the options of next time. And then I'll just replace the one that has been said with um, another story. And I'll just kind of go through the Z Towns I've been to and um, come up with any other interesting stories you might like. And if it doesn't get chosen, it doesn't get chosen. I'll leave that up to you guys. But um, yeah, that was my first time playing Nerf. That was on mass. I'd done a little, few little house games here and there. But um, yeah, that was 2015. I'd been nerfing for five years now. And that was my first time. It was good fun. Did it with some really good friends and a, a couple hundred other people. It was a lot of fun. So um, yeah, I'll uh, let you guys vote in the comments and I'll give it a week from when this video comes out. So this will come out on a Thursday. So next Thursday, the one that has the most mentions in the comments, I'll do the next one. Might not be a story time that comes out next. I'm only releasing one video a week, but um, of all different varieties. So you might get a dueling video. You might get a thoughts video. You might get a story. Whatever people want, I generally... I'm open to suggestions of what you'd like next, but with the current... Uh, economic, with the current global situation, I'm limited to what I can film in my apartment. So, um... Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments and I will get this one out to you and start work on another one. If you like this format, let me know. If you've got any suggestions, let me know. Until the next one, be good. All good at it. Thank mm -hmm. you.